Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us see, from where do we get this word disease? What does the word disease means? Now disease means disturbed ease. So that means you are not at ease. You are not in a comfortable position. So you are feeling disturbed. You are feeling uncomfortable. So that is what happens when you are diseased. So it results in a change in either the functioning or the appearance of one or more systems of the body for worse. That's what I was telling just now that it is not only the function, even structure wise also a person might suffer from a disease. For example, sometimes some people uh, meet with some accidents and uh, they get fractures. So what are these fractures are some structural distortions in the body which cause discomfort and that is again a disease so anything which is bothering you with anything which is a change that has taken place inside your body whether function of a particular part of the body or in the structure of a particular part of the body but that is causing you discomfort that is nothing but disease now diseases are of many types which can make you uncomfortable in many different ways for example, when you are suffering from fever, now this fever can be due to malaria, the fever can also be due to typhoid, the fever can also be due to chikungunya and there are many other diseases during which one of the symptoms is fever. So this makes you uncomfortable. Similarly, if you are suffering from something like cold or cough, so again that makes you feel uncomfortable. You have headache. Now this headache, the cause of headache can be many different things or you feel very depressed now depressed can be related due to some of the deadly diseases which you are suffering from let us suppose if somebody is suffering from diseases like cancer or aids or tb so they tend to be they tend to be physically unwell at the same time they also tend to be mentally depressed and sad you might be very much upset with vomiting or stomach ache which happens many a times due to infection caused by something which you have eaten. Maybe you have you would have eaten some contaminated food item and because of which the bacteria and the germs are parting inside your intestine and that is why you are suffering from stomach ache or loose motion or vomiting. So these are some of the things which again make you feel uncomfortable. You might have made some accident because of which you say you hurt yourself, you had some injury or you maybe uh, there is some structural changes. Maybe you broke your hand, you broke your leg. So all these are structural changes. But again, then they also make you feel uncomfortable. So if you see here, these are all different scenarios which can make you feel uncomfortable. And whenever things make you uncomfortable, that means you are not at ease and that is when you are suffering from a disease. So that is what is disease all about. So here in this lesson, we will talk about the various types of diseases. We will see why are each of those diseases caused and how can they be treated. And most importantly, we will also talk about how can we prevent these diseases from taking place. So when we talk about disease, we are going to talk about the signs and symptoms of a disease. How do we get to know that a particular person is suffering from this disease? For example, there are so many diseases like malaria, typhoid, cholera. So how do we know who is suffering from which disease? So based on the symptoms. So let us see what do we mean by signs and symptoms. So when we say symptoms, these are basically the things we feel as being wrong. So symptoms of a disease are the things we feel as being wrong for example sometimes in a normal day you feel completely healthy you do not feel any pain in any part of your body but suddenly someday you wake up and you feel that you are having some sort of pain near your head so you feel that you are having headache now when you have headache you wait for some time but when you feel that no it is getting worse so you feel that something is wrong somewhere so these kind of things which you feel as being wrong, which doesn't happen in a normal day, they are the symptoms of a disease. So symptoms indicate that there might be a disease. Now symptoms doesn't necessarily say that it is a disease, but it indicate that there is a possibility that there can be a disease. For example, when you get this headache, that doesn't necessarily mean that there is something wrong inside your head. 
but it it just means that there is a possibility that is that there is some issue or there is a cause behind this headache now it is also possible that maybe you did not get a good sleep last night and that is why you just had headache which will go off on its own uh, in a few hours it is also possible that maybe you exposed yourself to uh, bright sun for a very long time and that is why you got that headache and again it will go off on its own but at the same time there are possibilities that maybe you are suffering from some disease which for example when you get viral fever or when you get diseases like uh, common cold or typhoid even in that also along with other symptoms you also have a symptom of headache so it, it can also be indicative of something else depending upon the other symptoms which you might be experiencing. The symptoms will only give you an indication that there can be a problem but it is not necessarily a problem always. Now what do we mean by signs of a disease? It means that signs of a disease are the things a doctor looks for on the basis of symptoms. Now when you fail a symptom for example you got a headache so you doubted that there might be a disease so what do you do you go to a doctor and you tell him whatever you are feeling so whatever you tell him are the symptoms so you just tell him that okay I woke up in the morning and I could feel a headache right so you explain to the doctor where it's in which part of the head exactly are you feeling headache how severe is the headache so you explain all your symptoms to the doctor now what will the doctor do now listening to your symptoms the doctor will start investigating your body and the doctor will try to find out things which might tell which disease it is so say you just told the doctor that you have headache so now the doctor might ask you to get a scan of your a CT scan of your head now when, once you get a CT scan so the CT scan is going to tell the doctor if there is something wrong inside your head right so now if the doctor sees that yes something is wrong inside your head so what are those they are basically the signs of a disease so they actually tell the doctor that these are the signs that the disease is there and if nothing is there that means there are no signs for that particular disease so symptoms is basically the term which is used for the things which a person experience that is different from the normal thing so they are the symptoms and signs of a disease means things which tell you that yes the disease exists so signs of a disease actually confirms the presence of a disease but symptoms indicate that there might be a disease there might not be a disease so signs indicate presence of a particular disease. So these, these are the difference between the two terms. Many people often use these two terms in, in, as synonyms. They feel that signs and symptoms, they both mean the same. But that is not the case. Symptoms tell that there can be a disease, there cannot be a disease. But signs means there is the disease. The disease is definitely there. Now let us talk about the types of disease. Now broadly we can divide diseases into two broad categories infectious disease and non-infectious disease so it is a very broad classification so in infectious disease we what do we have under this category these are the diseases which get transmitted from one person to another person now since it get so the disease if it is present in one person it can infect the other person as well so that is why it is called infectious disease so it can spread from one person to another in many different ways so each infectious disease has its own way of spreading from one person to another. Now some of the diseases can spread just by mere touch. It can spread by using the same utensils or same towels as the infected person. It can also spread through sexual contact. It can also spread through another medium for example air or water so there are different ways by which the diseases get transmitted but yes these diseases will spread from one person to another and that is why they are called communicable diseases because they get communicated from one person to another so they are communicable diseases on the other hand now some of the examples of infectious diseases are chicken pox, common cold, AIDS. Now AIDS is a disease which spread by sexual contact. Whereas common cold is a disease which can spread if, if you are in the vicinity of that person. Now it is not necessary that if you are in the vicinity of a person who is infected with common cold, you will definitely get it. But there is a high chance because when a person has common cold, it is very common for that person to sneeze quite often. Now when the person is sneezing out, so some of the particles are being 
come are coming out from that person's body now when you are in the near vicinity of the person so when you inhale you might take in some of those particles or some of those infected particles inside your body and that is how you can get that infection now there is always the probability which is higher but it is not for sure short that okay if you stayed near an infected person for a day you will get common cold that is not the case again in case of chicken pox also so when somebody has chicken pox so if you get in touch with those uh, the surface of your skin which tends to fall off when somebody is suffering from chicken pox so if you get in touch with those things you might get chicken pox so these are some of the infectious diseases non-infectious diseases are those which do not get transmitted from one person to another and therefore they are called non-communicable diseases now these diseases might be genetic in nature that is they were inherited from their parents or they could also be by birth some of the diseases are present in a person by birth and they do not get uh, spread from one person to another however these kind of diseases could be due to environmental factors or due to accidental factors for example somebody met with an accident and got a fracture in his leg so obviously that fracture in his leg is not going to spread from one person to another it can also be due to poor intake of food like many people they do not have sufficient money to provide themselves good food so if you are not able to get the required amount of food you tend to become malnutritious and you might become weak and you might suffer from many diseases so they are again non-communicable diseases so some of the examples are asthma diabetes cancer so these are non-communicable diseases so they do not get transmitted from one person to another person thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test thank you once again